We're looking today at the perfect topics, which is incredibly important. And it's important for whether you're doing outreach and whether you're doing targeting as well, because really what we're talking about doing is creating something that do two things, identifies your target market and really gives them a, re a strong, immediate scent that something that's going to be very valuable to them is just around the corner, that's it, that it's within reach, right? You want to get them immediately um, excited and immediately thinking that is for me. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk through the principles of what a perfect topic may be. And then we're going to look at really breaking it down. And I'm also going to give you a bunch of examples, um, both just examples of language that you can use, little constructs that you can use, some sample headlines that, that I've just put together, and also some examples as well from the web. Now it's worth noting again that when we're talking about perfect topics, this is irrespective of channel or medium. So you could have a blog post, you could have a webinar, an ebook, a printed book, all kinds of things could could use these these topics, but they've all got something really in common. So the summary, the goal of a perfect topic is that you want your prospect immediately to believe that what I know, what we know, right? And by implication, what you don't yet know could be the key to your success or could be the key to your avoiding failure, which is the equivalent, okay? What I know and you don't know could be the key to your success. And I want you to have enough confidence in that immediately that it gives you a, a forward uh, momentum. And that forward momentum, I'm hoping, is going to be sufficient for you to make a purchase, do a free download, enter your email address quite, quite commonly, or to sign up for a webinar or where, whatever it may be. Maybe put in your mailing address if you're mailing out free books. So let's break that down. Okay, there's something I know that you don't know that could be the key to your success. Now, part of this is the lack. There's something missing. There is a gap between where you are now and where you want to be, your desired outcome, where you think you should be, right? So if you picture, they're there now and where they want to be is somewhere slightly different and the, there's a gap between those two points. Right. So we need to be conscious of the gap. So what I would definitely advise you to do is grab a piece of paper, grab a pen or pencil, just do a picture of, you know, a little stick figure and describe where they are now. And then describe, put another little stick figure. This is where they want to be. And what can we say about that? What, what distinguishes, differentiates that place they want to be from where they are now? And that difference is the gap, right? And we need to establish that there's a gap and there's a reason for the gap, okay? So is there something your, your prospect wants? Is there something that they are struggling to achieve? Or is there something that they, they don't know or something they don't have that could help them avoid failure? Okay, so it's either something positive they want or something missing that could result in failure and, unless they get it. All right now, the next thing is the root cause. Why? Why is an incredibly powerful word. Why is does the gap exist? And fundamentally, what we're saying is that there's a there's some missing information, right? So, your privileged position as the person who is in the fortunate position of having some knowledge to be able to help this other person, right? You are higher up the ladder than they are. You are further along the path than they are. You are further up the mountain, right? This comes from that you understand the reasons why. You understand the root cause or the causes of the lack, the gap, the problem. I know 
why you're frustrated because you're there and you want to be there right and i know why and if i tell you that you'll believe me because it you've got more to gain by believing me than you have to lose so here are some examples of words we might use simply just starting your headline with why your topic right why so and so why is an incredibly powerful word as we say it 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 implies that there is a cause and effect. There's a, some logic at play, right? This is happening because of something else. And I'm going to tell you what that because is. And all this is doing is pointing to this is the root cause and I know what it is. And I can help you. The real reasons why. Or discover why, right? By the way, just a little tip. You probably want to... If you ever find yourself using the word learn, right, try changing it to discover because learn connotates, uh, connotes work, right? Learning is what we did at school and we didn't enjoy it. We had to sit there and go, nah, right? Discover is an, uh, an explosion. It's, it's just you become aware of something and you don't have to do any work to do it. Discoveries don't bring with them that, that weight of that burden. How about revealed? Why? So lots of little, you're going to get a whole bunch of components from this. So, you know, go over it a few times and see which of these feel right for you. Another one you, thing you want to mention is the thing that your prospect cares most about. When we see that thing in front of us, when somebody talks about it, then it'll get our attention. So it could be all kinds of things. It could be their status, their children, their home, their family, their savings, their reputation, growing their business, getting new clients, protecting their investments, or getting free from something that's been bothering them or holding them back. All kinds of things. Now we also, remember we we're trying to do all of this in one sentence, okay? We also want to imply that there is hidden knowledge, i.e. knowledge that I have and that you don't have, okay? And I want to share that knowledge with you. Okay, so examples of things. We might say the secret too. The secret implies that very few people know this, but I know it, and I know you want to know it. So I want to, I want to give you this secret. Isn't that exciting? Or the secrets of the most successful salespeople or whatever. The surprising truth is really funny. I'm conscious there's a, uh, a writer called Daniel H. Pink, and I've bought a couple of his books in the past. And um, when I looked him up on Amazon one time, I realized that two of his books were subtitled with the, the surprising truth about, right? And I thought, well, that's great. You know, if it works once, do it again. Why not? You know, the surprising truth is... Uh, it's got that, that uh, taste of intrigue about it. Revealed, as we've already looked at, right? Revealed suggests that there's something that has been previously unknown and is now knowable. I, lo I like this one. What I learned from 10 years of, or what I learned from 30 years as a, okay? Next thing might be, is the reason for the gap, is, is it a lack of knowledge? Is there an obstacle to remove? Okay. Can you help them to do something either quicker, more easily, or better, more cheaply, or without a usual cost or side effect or difficulty that you would normally associate with removing the obstacle? Or automatically, could knowing this information magically make the thing disappear? Or with an unfair advantage? Can we tilt the game? Can we give them a shortcut, a back door? You know, a free pass into something. So it's all, all worth thinking about. Next component, right? And you, you may use some of these. You probably won't use all of them, all right? They might not all be relevant. News. And news is applicable if something has changed. Is there a particular reason why this point in time makes the message particularly poignant? I quite often like to think about surfers standing out in the, in the water with their boards waiting for that wave to come. So, you know, what wave is arriving now? What's just around the corner? What's about to happen? 
you know what algorithm update is going to come out that if you if you don't know what i'm about to tell you your website could disappear off the search rankings right because of something i know is going to arrive in four weeks so what's changed what's new is there a reason why this possibility is only available now so this thing wasn't possible before so language you might use include now you can this is powerful and it Phrases like this, guys, it doesn't matter how many times you look at it, right? This stuff doesn't get tired. Right? Now you can, it just, it's just marketing loop. It gets your message straight into somebody's heart, right? Now you can. Or why Google's latest update means, or what Google's latest update means for your business. What about so-and-so is dead? I wrote web design is dead and I chose those words for a good reason. Right? We're saying at a point in time, this used to be the case, it's no longer the case, now there's something new. Something has changed and you need to know about it. Or something, some new occurrence, is throwing the old rules out the window. And what it means for you and so on. Next one, scarcity of information. Right, this is saying there's a reason why not everybody knows this. So again, remember, reasons why. Reasons why can sugarcoat anything that you want to say. Okay, so is there a reason why they don't already know this valuable information? So the truth about, we may say, or well, how about something that they don't teach in wherever? Words like secret, obscure, underground, right? Or insider secrets, unknown, never before published. It's a nice one. Insiders, so-and-so, confidential, or even the ultimate guide is suggesting that for the first time, all of this information has been gathered in one place. So all of this is suggesting that there's maybe some kind of ivory tower where, where the information is being held. And it's just implying that it's not freely available. And that then starts to draw in the velvet rope mechanic, where you're saying, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you into a secret club of people, right? So um, countering misinformation is an extension of that. What this is saying is, you've been misinformed up till now, and there's a, what, a reason, why you've been misinformed. So, why have they been misinformed? Who benefits by the misinformation? Or who stands to lose if everybody realizes the truth? Okay, There's, just ask yourself those questions, right? Because it could give you an angle, could give you a human news story, okay? So how about that so-and-so don't want you to know? or that so-and-so never told you, the things that your college professor never told you, that your careers guidance, that your parents never told you, that your priest never told you, that so-and-so wanted to keep secret. Then we also need to think about adding details. Because remember, one of the, the most crucial things about having a perfect topic that distinguishes it from an ordinary topic is that it directly speaks to your bullseye target market, right? Not, not just the whole target, because remember, you know, not every area on the target is worth the same. And if you, if you just manage to clip the edge of your target, that you don't get any points for clipping the edge of your target, right? You might get 50 points for getting a bullseye. So we need to be shooting for the bullseye. You don't aim for your whole target market. Right? Aim for the bullseye and specifically target them so that we can polarize our message to attract the people we really want and, by equal measure, repel the ones that are actually going to cost us time and waste our pay-per-click budget and waste our time answering questions. So we need to target not just this particular message, but all of our marketing, a whole campaign at our ideal prospects. So... What do we know is true about all of them? Are they all parents of young children? Are they all um, 
immigrants from overseas speaking a second language? You know, are they all university educated? Are they all female? Are they all over 50? Right now, we may take these things for granted, but if we don't share that information to say this is who the message is for in the subject line of the message, then maybe they're not going to know that. So it can, it can really help, even if it seems like we're stating the obvious. So what we want to do is we want to describe something about them, something about their exact present situation, or something about their desired outcome, or all of these things, in a way that shows that this is specifically for them. And it also then implies, or lets them know that we understand what they want. So think about that. Can we describe the, the situation they're in now, where they want to get to, okay? Because it shows this is for you and I understand you and I know why this is important to you, okay? So just one example for that is you may want to say only for so-and-so, or you may just say, you know, kindergarten parents at, at the beginning of your headline. Why not? If your message is for kindergarten parents, say kindergarten parents. Ideally, what we want to say is, hey, you, yes, you in the green shirt sitting there at the other end of the computer. Yes, I'm speaking to you, Bill. Right? That, that's the feeling that we want to get. Now, you can't do that, but you can say, my message is for all women between 25 and 35 who are trying to get pregnant. Okay? By saying that, you will positively attract that target market. And the people who are never going to buy from you can ignore your message and carry on about their day. Another one is to imply ease of access. Now, um, I, I'm not suggesting that we, that we misrepresent the truth in this, but everyone's looking for a shortcut, right? And if you're saying, I've got information that's going to help you to do something, and it can be done easily, then we should say that, right? Because it makes it more attractive, right? There is a gap between where you are and where you want to be. We know that, right? And it's significant, it's important. However, I can help you reach where you want to be with less work, less cost than any other way, right? You, we all know that you want to be there. Let me show you how to do it the easiest way. So there's a, quite a lot of words that we can use for this. And you'll recognize them all. You'll have seen them all so many times. Shortcut, cheats, tricks, backdoor, right? How many times have you seen, you know, one weird trick to a flat belly type of advert, right? Um, super fast trick. Gives you an unfair advantage. Gives you the edge. Incredibly easy. Proven to. Automatically. Instantly. Or even do something as, as funky as, you know, that even a third grader could do. That even your grandmother could do. Okay? And all of that is saying, this is, not only is it instantly available to you, but once you know this information, it will become easy. Or at least it'll become easier than it appears to be now. So I'm just going to talk you through quickly a few examples that I've put together. And the first one is, this is the one that we created for, uh, for Brian McFarlane. So why the traditional corporate sales techniques you used successfully in 2005 don't work anymore. And we've, I've written a whole article about this on open source marketing. So what we know here is that we are talking to B2B salespeople, right? This is Brian's market. He was specific. I want to talk to B2B salespeople, but they also need to be senior. So either senior salespeople or sales directors. And that means, well, what does that mean? That, well, they've been in the been doing this for at least 10 years. In fact, they were doing it successfully 10 years ago. Because the way that Brian said, described it to me is, we want to be talking to people who have been successful and are looking for a way to get their edge back using social media. Because what Brian's selling is uh, coaching and uh, programs of marketing via LinkedIn. So, why the traditional corporate sales techniques you used successfully in 2005 don't work anymore. So that is really specifically carving out 
a particular niche in the market, right? B2B salespeople that were successful 10 years ago are less successful now and are wondering how they can be more successful now, right? That's the question we're going to answer. Specific. The five real reasons your smart child has always struggled with English. Now, so who are we looking at here? Definitely parents who've got kids who are struggling with English, right? And the parent obviously wants the child to do better at English. The parent also thinks their child is smart and they're frustrated because they don't understand why the child is struggling. And what we're saying is, I'm going to get, I'll, I'll tell you the reasons. These are the reasons you're not crazy. You know, we know your child is smart. And I, I'm going to explain why and how you can stop being frustrated. How about uh, why buying cheap articles is actually hurting your search rankings? Okay, so who are we looking at? We're looking at people with websites who want to be ranking on the search results and who understand the, the value of buying content marketing and who are doing it at a cut price rate. Okay, so or, <laughs> this, this is all we're saying. Right? This is exactly, this is my target market, exactly your people. But what I need to tell you, the news I'm giving you is that this could actually now be hurting your search rankings. We could throw the word now in there actually, because that suggests news. That suggests that something has changed, something is different. And here's a, uh, a big one, revealed. The seven most costly business mistakes that 99.4% of professional therapists make and how you can cut them out of your practice instantly. Uh, so I just put this together as a big mishmash of stuff. But you know, we're, we're being specific here. I'm gonna tell you all of the most costly reasons why. I'm being very specific that 99.4% of people in your market, and I'm being specific about my market, professional therapists, all right? And I've got a promise, how you can cut them out of your practice, right? So we're using quite emotive language, quite physical, quite violent language. Cut it out, right? Get rid of it and do it instantly, right? So if you're a professional therapist, you're going to be curious because you're almost certainly in that 99.4%, right? Obviously, I completely made this up. And here's another one that I actually got from a, an ebook title. I've just played with it and made it a bit better, I think. Entrepreneurs, discover the new shortcut to dominating your niche in just seven days for free using only YouTube. Okay, so we've got multiple kind of immediate access signals there. In just seven days for free, using only YouTube. So I'm not gonna hit you with, here are 50 different channels that you need to be playing with, right? But I'm going to, and, and we're suggesting it's a shortcut as well. And it, you're dominating your niche. You're not just growing your business, dominating your niche. And of course, we've identified exactly who we're talking to. And here's another interesting one. Discover the ancient Chinese secret. Okay, that's a good way to start anything to getting pregnant with ease that Western medicine ignored for 500 years. Okay, so we're talking here about hidden knowledge and we're saying ancient Chinese, which brings with it this kind of aura of, you know, an ancient civilization. This thing worked for a long time. But we're saying, who has prevented you from knowing this secret information? Well, it's Western medicine. So we're probably going to be speaking to an audience Obviously, they, they want to get pregnant, right? And obviously, uh, we, can, we can imagine that they may be slightly suspicious about regular uh, Western-style medicine. So if you're talking to an alternative health kind of market, then something like this, what it's doing is it's reflecting their worldview. So if your target market is suspicious about the general status quo, right? The, and, and if you are, then what you've got is your why matches their why. Your worldview 
resonates with their worldview. So share your worldview in your message. And remember that if you get a perfect topic, whether it's an ebook or a webinar or YouTube video or whatever it is, that, that does a good job of identifying your target market, of connecting immediately and emotionally with them. And so that it works, it helps to build your list, helps to grow your business, get your leads, make your sales, whatever it may be. This one perfect topic could work for you for years, right? The one weird tip for a flat belly ad could be running in 10 years time for all we know, if it still works. So discover, all right? So what we're saying is hidden knowledge, right? There's some knowledge you don't know. Ancient Chinese secret, okay, to getting pregnant with ease. So we've got, you know, you can see all the components now that we've gone over starting to emerge and pop up in these words. These words are there for a reason. That Western medicine ignored the, how dare they ignore this? We know better than Western medicine, right? And they've ignored it for 500 years. This information has been available and people have kept it from you through their Western ignorance for 500 years. Now what I'm just going to do is just share, I did a quick search on Amazon for, I think, free how-to or free how-to guide. Okay, so you, you could do something like this and start looking around to say, well, how well are these titles um, implementing the perfect topic workbook, the perfect topic kind of structure? So the first one is the ultimate gluten-free diet guide. Um, I'd probably remove the word guide there because guide is a bit vague, but ultimate gluten-free diet, yeah, got that. How to eat clean, which is the thing that I want, and achieve a healthy lifestyle, which is the thing that I want, on a budget, which is removing an obstacle. Okay, it's saying it's affordable, and it's saying that the obstacle of price isn't there. Second one is beyond anger. A guide for men. Right, what we're we doing? Identifying our target market. This is a book for men, not a book for women. All right, and there's a bloke on the cover, so there you go. How to free yourself. Free yourself is a powerful word. From the grip of anger. So we're not just saying free yourself from anger. We're, we're using a physical metaphor. Free yourself from the grip of it. And what comes up? Get more out of life. All right, get more out of life is fairly vague. There are probably more specific ways of doing it. But what is that? That is a representation of the place they want to be. Where they are now, in the grip of anger. Where they want to be, getting more out of life. There you go. Next one is OCD. Take control of obsessive compulsive behavior for good. For good is, is really useful, you know. So if, if people have maybe tried something and failed at it before, offer them a, a way to say, do it, you know, get out of this for good. A guide to how to free yourself from obsessive compulsive something or other. Right, few, few extra words there. Um, next one, a guide to traffic. Right, now guide to traffic is, that's kind of okay. It's, I guess we're talking to website owners, but it may also be talking to people interested in Vehicle traffic, I don't know. Learn how to get more free targeted website visitors in no time, right? In no time, I like. More free targeted. Okay, that's the three things. Yeah, I want numbers. I want. don't want to pay for it. I want it to be targeted. Good. Uh, learn how. Yeah, I would probably change that. I, in fact, I'd probably just remove learn at all. Or even... So you could have guide to traffic, how to get more free targeted website visitors in no time, or guide to traffic, get more free targeted website visitors in no time, which is a promise. Last two, end your addiction now. Like that, where are you? Addicted, where do you want to be? Not addicted, right? End your addiction now. The proven, good word, Nutritional supplement program that can set you free. Set you free is an emotional description of where you want to be. Right? We saw the same with the anger book. Right? Get more out of life. The, what do they want? They want to be free. And this is proven. It works. Then the final one. What you can do right now 
to help your child with autism. Your child, the thing they most care about. Okay? What you want to do, you want to help them. And this is saying you can, right? Two very powerful words. You can do it right now. So this is the, you know, just a, re a rearrangement of now you can really. What you can do right now to, boom, get the thing you most want. So there you go. Just a few examples snatched off Amazon. Um, you can also go onto Google and type in free ebook and, and things like that or Google Images. There's lots of examples out there and you will start to see now which of these topics people have done that are just a bit lazy. You will also start to see some that are probably just turned up a bit too much to the point that they start to become incredible. But the ones that are at least you know, trying to, to make a powerful promise, you can bet that they'll be the ones that get the most success. So I hope you can use this guide, work through those sections and say, well, is there anything for, for, for this, for my particular target market that I can use, that I should include in my perfect topic? And remember, it can be a long sentence. Use as many words as you need to use and no more, but use as many words as you need to use to make this a really appealing promise so that people are immediately convinced that you're saying this knowledge that I've got, that you haven't got, that can help you get to where you want to be, that can help make you successful. And all of these are doing that. What you can do right now to help your child with autism says, there is some knowledge that, that I want to share with you that can help you have the life that you want, okay? And ultimately that's what we're in the business of doing and that is how we're going to build our lists build our customer base